the craziest things that I just came across, right? So I was listening to this podcast, right? Because when I'm at work, bro, I have my headphone in. You know, I keep my hoodie up so I don't get in trouble. But I have my headphones in. And throughout the whole day, I'm learning about millionaires speak. I'm hearing about neuroscientists just like um, Andrew Huberman. I learned about smart shit. I learned things that, like, I want to take within my life. Like, I watch a lot of Andrew Huberman, millionaires speak, how to become more, like, you know, have a better worth ethic and all sorts of things, how to diet, all sorts of things, what food works with your body, all shit like that, right? So this is where I came into this study with with um Andrew Huberman. And if you guys want to go check him out, go check him out. Big fan of him. Bro, he, he knows so much shit, right? Just said is something like that's going to tie into this video, bro. Today's video is how to make pain your pleasure. How to do the things that you hate to do, but like you love it, bro. And this is like real shit that's going to help you overall as a human being. That's going to take you to higher extents. And just like he's interviewing David Goggins. Everyone knows David Goggins. He's one of the realest G's out here. He's one of the guys who goes hard, not a pussy, and I make no bitch ass excuses. None of that, right? So let me get into it with you guys, right? So he's talking about the anterior, I don't know how to say the other word, cortex, right? This is going to help you grow the parts that you don't want to do, but make you stronger, stronger, stronger. And as I could say, bro, everything that he described, right? I'm going to go over it. This explained me. I just want to give you guys a brief thing. This explained me. And I, I like it, it might see yeah, I sound egotistical or some sort of things like that, but it's just it's not like the first person I thought of was like that he described was like David Goggins and like Kobe. And then it, like it was just me. I thought of myself because like, bro, from a little kid, like you guys will understand, like from a little kid, I never like to work out. Right. And we're going to go into like the workout shit. But as a little kid, I never I, I started training when I was a younger kid. I never stopped. I never gave up in whatever I did. Like, I played soccer. I played soccer all the fucking time. I played basketball all this fucking time. I was the only kid out of all of, the, like, my friend groups and everything like that that actually trained and took the sport serious. No one else did that shit. Nobody else likes to train as much as me. No one else likes to do the hard shit as much as me. So this is why I felt like as a connect of me, like, actually growing as a human being, as me being, like, I'm, I'm, nine, I'm 20 years old, but I'm going to be... 21 real soon and just continuously growing like how these people do right so anterior mendelite cortex i don't know the word i can't really pronounce it but it gets bigger when you diet and instantly like it went into me like not to be e egotistical right it went to me i diet i eat steak i eat chicken i eat all the foods that i need to eat to get my protein up and to feel you know healthy and all sorts of things i cook my foods all of that right Larger in athletes. I've been an athlete since a kid, bro. It's just been soccer, basketball, nonstop, weightlifting. Whatever it is, I, whatever I wanted to do, I went and did it. You know, and I, I instantly thought when he said athlete, Kobe. If you think about Kobe, bro, his mindset, bro, sometimes he didn't even go to sleep. And he had games after. He had to go play for the Lakers and shit like that. He'll still go drop fucking 30 a night off of zero sleep, bro. You know what I'm saying? And this is where that part of your brain is like... I don't want to do it, but I have to go do it. Off of zero sleep, who the fuck wants to get zero sleep and go do what they have to do? Nobody wants to do that, but you have to do that. But it actually makes you grow as a human being, as a person. This is a big thing, too, that instantly that I thought, bro. It grows really big when you have, like, a chip on your shoulder, when you're oppressed, when there's people telling you that you can't do things and... And and you go and do them anyways, bro. I know people every fucking... Just before I made this video, I know somebody who's hating on me, talking mad shit about me. I know these people. This is something I do every day. So this shit grows without me even... Like, I don't know this shit in my mind. I don't know this shit. But it's people that you know that are going to hate on you, but you continuously to grow and not listen to them and say, fuck all that, and you go do what you got to do. That is how you're going to continuously to grow. It's like all tying in into like me kind of thing. It's crazy. Where like, just before I recorded this video right now as I'm speaking, I got people hating on me. That's game. Like, that's just who I am. I don't, I nix that all. Fuck out of here. I don't care about that shit, you know? And if you're going to do the hard work, especially the hard work, but doing it like how you love it, making the pain your pleasure, you have to do it. It's no if, ands, or buts, right? So I'm going to get into it. Hold on. It doesn't grow. This part of your brain does not grow if you do what you love to do. Like, for me, for instance, right? I'm going to get into weight training. But me, right now, if I were to go and weight train and everything like that, that's what I do. This is my life. That is what I do. That is not something I'm going to stop ever. So that is not something that I can continuously grow, right? Like for me, it says doing anything. Andrew Huberman said it's doing anything that you don't want to do. If I wake up four in the morning and I hear that fucking alarm bell go off and I, I want to hit that snooze button, but I don't and I get up, that is growth. It's slow growth that you don't even realize, but that builds your character, right? I like to see this as like a slight video game where you 
one plus one right right think about it like you have like attributes on nba 2k right you have the three right so every time you do something like you know um hard that you don't want to do you get that plus one attribute to that three-pointer that plus one attribute to that playmaking that plus one attribute to the inside scoring whatever the fuck or you start to earn badges right think of it like that that's how i think of it so from the moment i wake up i don't want to wake up to go to work but i have to go do that shit you know what i'm saying so i have to go do that regardless i gotta go do it but that's something that i don't like to do so i get that plus one attribute it's like a little game that i like see it as in you know, as you continuously grow throughout your life, you're going to keep going harder, harder, harder. And I'm going to get, let me just get into it. Bro. It will shrink if you don't follow up on doing the things that you don't want to do, right? It will slowly start to shrink day after day. If you continuously become lazy, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. You become like a bum, just like everyone else. This is going to shrink. So your standards are going to slowly, as you keep building standards of like what you do on your day-to-day -day basis, it will slowly start to diminish if you don't stay on top of it and continuously to cha challenge yourself, right? Like I said, in weightlifting or the gym and shit like that. I, I challenge myself all the time, but like I love that shit, right? So now I started to implement more boxing and more boxing training and not it's not my favorite training, you know, doing more cardio like jump rope and shit like that, but I'm still going to go do it. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to grow and grow and grow and grow as a human being to get you better as like that player. You know, I always think about like that, that the best version of myself in my brain. So it's like, bro, I think of me trying to grow and grow and grow as a human. And like, just like by 25 being like, I have this image of Patrick by 25. He's going to be something so crazy that it's like, I have to keep chasing that. It's still things that I have to keep challenging myself no matter what happens, right? This, like me doing work right now on top of all of the things that I already did today is a challenge, but I have to do it. I got to keep growing because if not, it's going to diminish. You understand what I'm saying? And it's small and obese people. So if you're big, you know, if you're fat, like, like, let's, let's cut it real. If you're fat, you're not going to feel as much, right? And I instantly, when he said that, right, like I thought, like, I looked at my workplace. I can't even lie. I'm not even going to like, I don't like to make fun of people or anything like that. But I see people from the moment I like, I wake up, it's like fucking oh, four in the morning. I get there by five, five thirty. People were in the break room, like eating a bag of chips with like a fucking big ass Mountain Dew right there. So I'm like, and I see that the guy and he's like plus like 300 and I'm like, wow, what the fuck? But like, think about like a fat dude, like, or like a bigger person or even yourself, if you're big, like. You don't want to do as much. Like, you ask some of these people to go do something. They're not, like, you know, obligated. It's always, like, a hassle. It's always a drag. It's always, like, ah, I don't want to do that shit. Like, oh, man, I got to do this. You know, you hear these people, ah, I got to do this. I got to do that. But, like, this is, like, when you build up yourself. Like, for me, I made standards of no excuses. I'm not trying to hear about or no, not excuses, no complaining. Complaining is for the biggest of bitches. I'm not trying to hear people complain. If you're a man, like a grown ass man, you're complaining like a little bitch to me. I'm thinking, I, I think of you so feminized. I'm sorry. Like, that's what like women do. Like, we're not supposed to be complaining. Oh, I got to go do this. Uh, I got to do this. I got to do that. Like, you're a bitch to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a thousand. I hate hearing that shit. I'm hearing a dude complain, a grown ass man complain. While I do all of this shit throughout my day, they don't even do nearly as much, but they're fucking complaining like bitch. Bitches. that's why i don't cut like slack for most people that's why like i'd be so cutthroat i'm like stop being a bitch stop being so soft like i'm tired of that shit right so now let's get into the video of how to make pain your pleasure right and it took a little while right i'm not gonna lie to you but i have to get these facts out for you guys right this is the biggest bro let, let me go let me go into a quick story for you guys right when i was younger i was about 12 years old i used to stay out this like for one month at the place i used to live out right over here um around the area and i stayed out here and i know someone who tried to took me to train and to go out to run and shit like that and basically i couldn't do it i didn't want to do it i felt like you know the, like the computer game i was a computer game fucking nerd all day on the game and shit like that i didn't want to go run i didn't want to train i didn't want to do none of that shit none of that shit right and it took about like a little while to take it upon myself to want to go do this shit right so the the biggest like the big thing about this whole video is is that there's no easy life hack or like something for you to like oh like to do the pain the shit that you don't like the pain the shit that you have to do right the the go to work or go do this or do that after work and hit the gym this that like we're gonna take most more so like the gym as an example because i love the gym but i had to learn to love the gym i had to learn how to do the gym i had to learn everything about the gym so that i could know what i'm talking about when it comes to 
like the part of the gym, right? So everything like for exercise, everyone complains about exercise. And I once was that person, right? I was one of those skinny fat kids, you know, couldn't even, didn't want to run, didn't want to go do anything. You tell me to go do whatever training, I can go do it because I that's who I am. I don't give a fuck whether I like it or not. If I want to do it or if I have to do it, I'm going to go do it. That's just what I am. And basically, like I said, there's no simple life hack trope. So when I was a kid, I didn't want to go do that shit. I, you know, I kind of had that spark of motivation, right? So like normally around this time, it's January 1st, right? Or it's January what, like fucking 5th right now? You know, most people go to the gym by January 1st. Everyone has their goals. They write them down for like, you know, a few days. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to lose this amount of weight. I'm going to go hit the gym. You know, if you hit the gym, you know, around this time, the gym gets packed because there's those new people who say they're going to go to hit the gym, but by next week, they're nowhere near the scene of the gym. They don't talk about it. The, there's no such thing as gym after this next week. It was that spark of motivation. Once they did it, they burnt themselves out after going for seven days out of the week. And then boom, they don't want, they, they're back to who they once were 2023, the same person. They're not hitting the gym. Goal is failed already after one to two weeks. Don't be that person, right? So to get into this, right, you have to do the work. There's no ifs, ands, and buts. It's like, if you're a bitch, you're a bitch. If, you, if, that's, if that's gonna hurt your feelings, you could click off the video. If you're soft, that's, that's you guys. I'm sorry. But this is for the people who really wanna win, right? You're not going to get like an easy, oh, fucking hack. Oh, this is how you, you get to get more motivation to hit the gym and shit like that. Like, no. Like, I could tell you things of like my goals of who I am, what certain weight, what body weight I wanna be. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit. But the answer is you have to go and do the work. So if your goal is like, you know, I'm gonna take the gym and weightlifting because that is the biggest thing for most people that I even talk to throughout the way. And you never really meet gym people or like people who like take their health, eat certain diets or like, you know, take exercise serious. Everyone else is just like, the same regular person who eats and just like, you know, eats garbage and just out of shape and all sorts of things, right? So we're going to talk about that. So you have to actually do the work, but switch the mindset. Like I said, I was a little kid. I didn't like the gym. I, you know, my dad used to try to take me to go run and sort of all of that sort of shit, go run and go do some push and shit. I hated it. I didn't want to do it. So I had to get that spark of motivation, right? I had to get that spark motivation, but it had to come from somewhere. So think about what you really want to be or who you want to be, or how you want to look, right? Mostly with like exercise and shit like that, you want to look like, you know, especially with the social media, you want to look like this certain person um, that like, you know, has all the abs and chisel arms and shit like that, you know, you want to look like them. So like, that's a pretty good goal that you have within your mind, but then switch that towards you. Switch that to, I want to look like that in five, six years or something like that, you know, something realistic and shit like that. But like, I want, like the goal is to look like him. I want to look like him. So then you start to do the things that you have to do in order to look like that person. You go watch like their YouTube video. You see how they get their aesthetic body, what like workouts they do and shit like that. But it's very important that you do what you like to do within this gym shit, right? It all started with me being consistent, right? It all started with me hitting the gym or doing pushups for three to four times out of the week. Nothing super crazy where, you know, like, like I said, these people who just start the gym, they start to get a burnout. They start to feel as if like, they hit the gym, Planet Fitness, or some shit like that, right? They'll go this full seven days. By next week, they're never in the gym again. I, I swear, I done seen all of this shit. I asked the people, like, you know, even the people that I know around the way, that I'm like, yo, why, bro? Why are you not in the gym and shit like that? Ah, uh, well, you know, I don't really like it. It's, it's just not for me. That's, like, the number one, op like, like thing that I get. It's not for you. Yet, you're, like, fucking 300 pounds. Oh, it's not for you, right? It, it, it doesn't matter if it's for you or not. Oh, no, it's not for me, right? So it, the, one of the things is to not burn out, right? Like when whatever you do, you can take this to whatever like system you are, right? For YouTube, I had experiences burnout shit. I really have. And, you know, sometimes I take some time off just like, you know, to reset my mental. But then it's like, you know, after hearing this information, I understand the game and just like really playing the cards and doing what you're not supposed to do. I mean, what you don't want to do, right? So you can take this information. I'm I'm just giving the gym as an example, but like you can put this in your workplace or whatever you do, what certain work that you want to do. Maybe it's homework, schoolwork. I don't know what it is, but this is going to help you guys. So as I started to hit the gym slowly and slowly, slowly, it started to go from three to four days to like five to six. Like it really, and for me, it happened fast. It might take longer for you. You might really don't want to do what you, you're supposed to do. Like, you know, for instance, if you're like 400, 300 pounds, you got to burn the cardio and, you know, weight lift a little bit. You're going to have to do that. You're just, that's just what it has to be. You have to see what you have to do and go do it. But do three to four times out of the week. Do not burn yourself out and, you know, watching your diet, all sorts of things that we're going to get into. Right. For me, for instance, as I started to show up at the gym, slowly and surely, like you get this thing called the newbie gains, right? 
And this is where basically for the first two year of lifting, you get to get the most gains that you can get throughout like the rest of your lifting career. Like basically the first two years are the most important to like, for me, I would say like if I was a beginner, I would prioritize my diet, bulk up, keep eating, depending your weight, of course, I was super skinny. So I would have bulked up, you know, really trained hard and, you know, focused on diet and getting sleep and everything like that. And I could have maximized my newbie gains, right? So as I started to see the newbie gains, right, regardless, you're going to get gains regardless because basically like your body's like really under a lot of pressure and it's starting to like get adapt to the weights and adapt to like the curls or the bench press. So you start to see more results, right? So as you start to see more results, you start to get more like more of the motivation like, damn, I want to go hit the gym. So that three to four times out of the week starts to hurt, like maybe five maybe six times out of the week, you know, it, it turned into me being a, like a monster in the gym, like guys, when I'm telling you, like, I didn't even like this shit, I didn't, I really didn't, but like, as I continue to go, as you start to feel the good feelings, the endorphins, you start to get a crazy pump, you start getting shoulder pumps, a bicep pumps, you start to feel crazy good, like, you get this like endorphins of like, man, this shit feels so good, and I, so this day, like, I don't see anything else that I want to do other than the gym. There's nothing, there's no better, like, feeling other than, like, probably busting a nut or some shit with a girl that feels better than, like, getting a good pump and feeling really good and feeling really strong at the gym. It's just, for me, it's no, there's nothing better than that, right? It might not be for you, but you will feel, you start to really feel good at the gym. You start to feel a lot better, right? You're seeing the results. The pumps are good. You know, a lot of the things are feeling really good. And especially if you take this information, you're not going to take, you're not going to have motivation all the time. It's just not what's going to happen. That's just not how your cards are going to play out. That's just not any cards. That's not how any of this shit works. I get demotivated. I love the gym a lot. But when it's leg day and shit like that, like tomorrow, it's leg day. I don't really want to fucking do legs, but I got to go do it. It's not something that like it's up for negotiable for me. It's not it's not like, oh, my brain can say, oh, well, let me see that my brain is wired. No, we're hitting the gym tomorrow. It's like that, you know, and we're going to have a good time. Right. And especially, like I said, the motivations running out. Those are the days that count the most. If you start to go hit the gym it, when the days when you definitely don't want to go, you end up having a really good workout and you actually feel a lot more proud. And those are the endorphins. Those are the things that's the chemicals that, you know, the good feelings, the endorphins, the music is hitting, the pumps are hitting. You know, you're feeling so much better. You know, you're feeling more healthy or you're taking care of your diet. The endorphins are going to feel good. And those are what's going to work and push you harder to get better and better and better. And it gets more easier. The weight starts to feel easier. So then you have to keep challenging yourself, challenging yourself. Maybe if you're curling the uh, 20 pounds now we got to go to the 25 so the 30 pounds and curl those and try to make it as good as we did with the 20 pounds that is the endorphins and continuously to push and to continuously have goals within the gym this is going to lead me into my next point when you set goals in whatever you do right like i'm specifically talking to gym my my i am fucking focused on gym because a lot of people don't really you know, they don't know how to like love what they don't like to do and shit like that, right? Like this is something that you build. It's not something that like, you know, for most things, you're not going to jump in and say, oh, I love this shit. Like, no, you're probably not going to like it. And, you know, but if it's something that is must must be done, if you are overweight or if you're super skinny, and you're insecure, the one thing you have to do is, you know, maybe go weightlift or go hit the gym or take care of your health and some things like that, right? The biggest thing that's going to motivate you, that's going to keep your maybe your motivation running or like that spark within your brain that's going to, you know, make you want to go to the gym, especially when you don't want to, is to set the gym goals, right? For instance, if I was 300 pounds, I would like to get to 200 pounds by next year. So what do I have to do for that? I have to write down in my notebook. I have to be in a calorie deficit. I have to um, watch more YouTube videos so I can get to know the form and, you know, all sorts of things, maybe do some studies and stuff like that. But I actually, most important thing is to show up. But if this is your main goals and stuff like that, especially with like the gym, you align your life to it. You start to eat healthier. You start to watch YouTube videos and, you know, you get like all sorts of motivations. You start to see all sorts of things that you have to do. You start to see the results. You show up and you feel much better, right? These goals are going to continuously to grow as I'm getting bigger, right? Like, you might think, like, I'm all right. Like, I, I don't feel all right. Like, I don't want to be like this. I want to be, like, I have Patrick in my brain, the 25-year-old Patrick. That is the guy who's chasing. I am continuously chasing after him. He He's all the way over here, bro. He's all the way over here, Patrick. 25-year-old Patrick's up here. 20-year-old Patrick's right here. And he's trying to chase. He's trying to get there. He's trying to, trying to get there. You know, that's like the game. That's what's going, that keeps me going, keeps me wanting to go, regardless of how I feel. It's the goals. It's so I want to look like how I want to look. I have this vision of Patrick that I'm never going to stop to get like that. I want to look like how he looks. 
in my mind, 25-year-old Patrick, I want to look like him. That is the ultimate goal, but your goals could be different. But more times than not, you want to have a vision of your future self and keep chasing after it. That's the number one goal of doing whatever with whatever you're doing. If you were a banker and you're trying to get as much money, but you have to learn, and you know, all the hard work is falling apart on you and you, you don't like to do it and you start to hate it. But overall, when you start to do the hard work, you start to feel so much better, right? Like, for instance, I probably... I kind of really didn't want to make this video today i didn't I, I really wanted to just cook my steak and go to sleep but knowing this information especially holding myself accountable to this shit now that i know it's only going to keep me going in this game of like bettering myself like this is this whole self-improvement channel this whole self-improvement thing as a whole is just getting better that's all it is and the goals that you're going to set is going to keep getting higher, higher, and higher because you're getting better and better and better. Like I said, if the little 20 pounds are feeling feeling too light, we going up to the 30s, bro. Let's get it. And we still curling. This These goals are going to get better. Oh, if for instance, right, for my um incline press, I'm around, I'm at like 75 for six. I'm trying to hit the 75 for uh for 10 and I want to get to the 80s and 85s. So my ultimate goal on this bulk is to get to 85s for eight. That is a big goal for me. And it's not easy going in day in, day out, trying to get eat more food, you know, you know, trying to push more weight and shit like that. It's not that easy. It, it's just not. And the goal is to get to the 85s. And once I reach the 85s, I have higher standards. I right, we touch the 85s in this amount of time, we're going up higher. You know what I'm saying? Like you are going to want to keep going. These, this is what's going to help you, not only within the gym or whatever the fuck you're doing. This is going to help you in all of life. This is the biggest thing for me, bro. Like, like I really want to understand, like, when I preach about the gym, it's not only just about, like, oh, I look like this. I could show you my abs. Oh, I just flashed. I, I could show you my abs, my muscles and shit like that. It's not only about that. Like, that's for me. I want to look like how I want to look. But when you don't do... You don't when you do the things that you don't want to do throughout life, everything, a lot of things come easy. So much shit comes easy that you start to shit on people. You guys don't even understand. So like I was saying, hit, tell yourself to go. Though if you want, if you're 300 pounds, lose that 100 pounds by this right down by this time, time, time. Do what you got to do, and you say in your brain, say it out loud, feel it. I will not stop until I reach that goal. That is the biggest thing. It's to speak it to existence. I was just reading a book. Well. Um, Think and grow rich. This shit's right there. I was just reading it last night, bro. It's talking about write your goals down, but say it. Speak it with existence. This is going to bring it to life. This is going to keep it in your mind and to your body and to your soul. You're not going to feel right if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. That is manipulating your mind in a good way to keep yourself going and keep yourself at a standard. Not slightly, oh, I don't feel like going to the gym today. Uh, 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 all that weird little fucking pussy shit. Fuck that. Fuck that, bro. This is going to hold you to that standard. You're going to continuously become the best version of yourself. I promise you. With writing your goals and having these goals in your brain and all sorts of things, and you're continuously to chase it, you will have a reason to go and keep continuously growing because, man, I got to hit that 80-pound dumbbell. Oh, I got to go do uh 225 on the bench. I got to hit 315 squat. I got to do this, that, and the third. This is going to keep that fire and desire within you. You even when you don't feel like it and you don't go and that pussy day comes and you do skip, right? You are gonna feel like, damn, I'm a bitch. Straight straight up, bro. If that ever even happened to me, because it it obviously happened to me where you know I ducked the gym, but like it's so rare. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. Like, I am so set scheduled with this shit. It's so rare that like I don't go to the gym on the set days that I set schedule. If I have rest days, of course, rest days I'm not gonna go to the gym. I might do some light boxing or some shit like that, right? But those set days, I'm going to the gym. And it's been such a long time that I didn't go to the gym for, like, those set days that I don't really know the feeling anymore. Like, that that's just how, like, it, like, like that's just how it becomes, guys. But when you don't, like, do what you're supposed to be doing, like, for YouTube, right? For instance, there's days I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing and I don't do it. I feel bad because it's in my mind, my body, and my soul. I know my goal. I want to hit 10K subs, but you didn't post on this day or you didn't you know, edit or make video ideas or something, didn't do no work on this day for your YouTube, that shit lives within me. I don't feel right. I was just telling you guys my other video, bro. Around Christmas time, I went around my family and shit like that. And this is something where, like, I'm like, okay, I could take some time off. I went for, like, two to three days out somewhere else. I, I wanted to, like, kind of reset my mind. But at the same time, like, I'm like, 
you probably could be getting some videos out right now. You probably could have some ideas or writing down some shit or, you know, something for YouTube, right? But throughout that whole time, I'm like, what? Like, I wake up and you feel weird. Like, you just, like, midday, you know, yeah, I hit the gym, okay, yeah, fuck it. Like, we hit the gym. I hit the gym anywhere, anytime, any place. I don't give a fuck where it is where it's at right uh, i was like about three hours away i still found the gym hit the gym i don't make pussy excuses for the gym but i'm like man i don't feel right like I, you just you feel it internally like within your body like your soul i'm telling you this this is like this is no bullshit like you can't just nix it off like eh, yeah i'm having a good time eh. like i remember being at parties sometimes and i'm like man what the fuck am i doing here i'm supposed to be either you know i'm supposed to be doing my youtube shit what the fuck i'm here for you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what the standards will hold you. And it will live within you. And it will eat you alive if you don't stick to what you're supposed to be doing. I swear to you. I'm not even making this shit up, bro. You, bro, it will stick on you. If I go a week without YouTube, I, that's probably like, uh, it's not a depressing week. But it's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I don't feel right. I don't feel good. You don't feel good. That that's that's the feeling. You just don't feel good. So back to like the part where I was tr telling you guys about training and shit like that, bro. This is like this video is so much information. I want to tell you guys, right? So as the shit becomes easier, you start to go, you know, from three to four days or two to three days to three to four to like five to six, and you know, you have that one rest day. So that is like your max thing, and you start to like love what you do and shit like that. You have to challenge the challenge yourself in other aspects of life, right? But this is like where you really see growth, where like, bro, like I told you guys earlier, I don't like excuses or I like, I don't like, I don't like complaining and like sounding like a bitch. Like I, you won't really hear me complain, but like a lot of other people do the workplace, all sorts of things I hear complaining. It's like, it eats me alive. I have to get away from the people like literally, right? But like with other challenges and other things, when you're weightlifting and you're dieting and you're spot on and you're doing this and you're been so scheduled, you are, the other challenges in life, a lot of the other challenges, you are so much more obligated to go face those challenges and be like, yeah, I'm straight up. Like, like you, fa you face the challenge straight up and straight down. And like, bro, the challenge isn't even a challenge. Like, you just take it on and it's like, this is the challenge. Like, you shit on it. Like, you're able to face a lot of different, like, you know, other people's problems or what other people will portray or see as problems. And you will just be like, this is what you're complaining about? Like, I went and did this work or whatever the fuck and you do something, it's easy. The challenge becomes easy because other... Bro, you weightlift, you do all sorts of things, right? Like, I'm just saying weightlifting, but, like, if you train other sports or you do fucking boxing, all this shit, like, this, that, and the third. Bro, if you do boxing, or you train, and you're fighting, you're, you know, your body's in, like, a great shape, and you switch to weightlifting, bro, you're gonna be so much more easier, like, than the regular average dude who's going to be, like, you know, a newbie in the gym. You're gonna be like, man, this shit ain't even all that hard. Like, you know, like... You just got to show up, test yourself, and keep getting stronger, 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 depending on your goals and shit like that. But, like, you're more obligated to do it since you did stuff like that. So, that's what I'm saying. When you're in the gym or you're set scheduled on whatever you're doing in your life, other challenges become, bro, five times, ten times easier. I swear to you, bro. What other people see as challenges, you'd be like, you 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 serious right now? Like, deadass? Like, what the fuck? This, I got this work done in two hours. You got this shit done in eight hours? Like, you start to see a shit like that, bro. You start, you want to take challenges. You start to train yourself and go harder, harder, harder. You start to want to take challenges. And I want to get into that with me. This is not my ego. This is truly who I am. Let me get into it. Basketball. I love basketball. Basketball and soccer, right? Even, all right, let's go over soccer first. I was a little kid, right? I was around, let's talk about like the, I, I played soccer since I was in second grade. So up until like I was in almost a uh, freshman in high school throughout that whole time especially within the sixth to eighth grade realm where i was like sixth to eighth grade you know really training playing for my middle school and shit like that i used to train every day every single day i promise you like even sometimes twice a day i promise you that like not even a joke so as i'm training right I would play guys and I get better. I'm getting better. I'm running like around the field. I'm getting my stamina up. I'm going through the cones. I'm hitting like, you know, I'm working on my shots and all sorts of things in my soccer and just training, juggling, getting my touch better and all sorts of things. I wanted challenges all the time. And what I, the people who I was with, it was like the best people for me. I was in the sixth to eighth grade range, right? Like I said, these guys are from high school, but they took me in as like the little bro. Like I'll, I'll take it as like, yo. These like wow, like these are big bros and these I'm the low bro and I'm playing against them and I'm getting better and better and they're like holy shit like you're pretty fucking good now bro like you're getting better and you know you start to see so much more progress playing with other people and you I wanted those challenges I didn't want to play like 
around kids my age that who like you know who didn't play the game serious, who never took soccer serious. I never wanted that shit. I never wanted that shit once, bro. I wanted to always play. Yo, where my where my big bros at? Like where they at today? Where the fuck they at? I need to go play them. You know, we used to have these crazy group chats where it would be like 20 people. Everyone in that group chat, I promise you, was older than me. There was none younger than me. They were all older than me. And they took soccer pretty fucking serious. Pretty fucking serious. So I had to hold myself to higher standards. I got better and better and better slowly. Slowly but surely, especially with practicing and kept practicing over them. I got better than, I'd even say like a few of the high school guys. I swear, as like a 7th grader, 8th grader. Promise you, bro. And now this is going to go into the fact of basketball. Now, this is something, because I stopped playing soccer uh, freshman, sophomore year. But this is basketball. I've been playing basketball for basically my whole life as well. Like, basically, bro, I've been playing basketball. I love to do that on my free time. If I got, like, you know, if I'm really not in the mood or, like, you know, my homies are hitting me or some shit. And they're like, yo, bro, let's go ball or some shit. I'm like, all right, let's go ball, you know. So I go and ball, like, as a relief. Like, you know, sometimes as a relief stress or if, like, it's a rest day, I'm going to, like, from the gym, I'm going to go hoop with my bros. So I go and hoop, right? Every time, bro, I promise you, ever since I've, like, trained and I've practiced basketball, nobody trained. This is the biggest thing. Nobody wanted to train. Like, all the friends, all my homies, all the people who play for the basketball teams, no one wanted to train. Only, like, practice from, like, motherfucking um, school if they made the team. But they never wanted to train ball, like, solo, like, you know, doing drills, like, getting your handles up and, you know, practicing, really practicing. But I did that. So I got better and held myself to higher standards so that within, like... Freshman year, bro, by freshman, sophomore year, I never wanted to play bums ever in my life. You know when you go to, like, LA Fitness or Planet, or I said Planet, or the Rec Center or some shit, and you got, like, these 55 overalls to be like, yo, bro, come play. I never wanted to play with them as a fucking younger kid. Never in my life, bro. But some of the homies be like, yo, bro, why are you playing? I'm like, bro, I do not want to waste my time with these dudes. I never want to play them. And even some of the bros, they weren't competition to me at all. Like, I'm like, bro, where's the comp at? Like, I have them on my team, and the other team would... Like, I'll take my bros that who don't hoop serious. I'll take them and have some period people who take ball a little serious and, like, go play against them. Be like, nah, you good, bro. You with me. We going to hoop, and we bust their ass because I love com competition, right? Even to this day, bro, I do not play basketball for fun and games. Like, and this is where the a regular person, you... Like, fucking shit on the regular person, bro. And I'm not saying that to be a rude, fucking, countless fucking dickhead. No, I promise you I'm not. It's just engraved in you. You want the challenge. I don't want to play bums. And I'm not saying I want the fucking NBA player, but I am so hardwired. Like, if I'm playing an NBA player, I'm going to give him my best. If He's going to fucking fuck me up, shit on me. But I, I, I could say, yeah, he nice, but... Like, he fucked me up, but I, I gave him my best. You know what I'm saying? This is, like, the standards to the levels that you shit on of people, bro. Like, for instance, a lot of people that like, I know, even my homies out here that I stay with, we go ball sometimes, right? There's one guy. One guy, but, like, I need the shit talking. I need something to get me going. I need... I need the challenge. I need to hear somebody talking some shit or, you know, they're saying that they're better than me or, like, you know, somebody that's going to bring it to me and is actually good. You know, actually good in a 1v1 or, like, a 5v5. I want that. That's what I crave. This is what I need, bro. This is what... Guys, you got to understand, when you're taking yourself to higher levels, you are... Let's say you are a 99 overall in 2K. Not saying I'm a 99. But a 55 overall comes who just started playing the game. You don't even... Like, you just drop them off smooth. Like, I like... I, I want somewhat a challenge, you know what I'm saying? So in ball, bro, with the homies out here, I go and hoop with a big group of us. Like, I never understood just playing basketball to like, you know, let's go shoot some hoops, guys. Like, like I've been playing ball my whole life. Like, you know, not saying I'm the best in the world, but I'm pretty good. Like, I'm all right. And like, you know, like on my free time, that's what I do. And then like, I always stuck with me. I always was pretty fucking good. And I never let myself go. Like, you know what I'm saying? my health condition, anything like that, so I'm like, man, I, I'm gonna be good at, like, whatever I'm gonna do, to be real with you, and my homies, they they just go, like, they, they, some of them are, like, the typical, like, yo, let's go hoop, and just play the hoop, you know what I'm saying, so I'm like, man, I don't even, like, you know what I'm saying, like, we go and play a 4v4 or whatever, right, there's only, like, one guy who's giving me a challenge, and that's it, and I'm just, and, Bro, it is so rare that I lose these games, so rare, even when I don't try, I'm like, you know, it eats at me. I'm like, I start to shit talk and then I start to get the games hype. But like, man, it, I am fucking shit up. It's like complete drop offs. And I'm like, man, I, I want the competition, right? So let me get into this last thing, right? 
So it's me and my bro. This is my man. This is the one guy that I can shit talk who doesn't like cry about it and just like, you know, he's like, he brings it back to me. He's like, man, you ass. I'm like, nah, nah, we hooping. I'm like, man, you can't guard me. You know, it's typical basketball shit, but it brings the best out of both people. I don't want to play just like, oh, let's just shoot around like, like, bro, what the fuck? I'm in the fifth grade. No, let's challenge each other. Let's get better. But they don't see that shit, right? So this is the only guy, right? So it's me and him. We hooping. And then two Spanish guys, right? Two Puerto Rican guys, right? They come into the gym. They're dressed like 55 overalls. 55 overalls, right? And me thinking, you know, I'm nice. I am nice. My homie's pretty decent as well. You know what I'm saying? But he brings the challenge. Even if you're ass and you bring a challenge, it's like, it's something good, right? So the other two guys across the court, they're like grown men. They're like 35 years old. You know, they, they were hooping in. You know, we look a little bit across the way because me and him are 1v1 going into intense games. Like, I'm, we're like giving each other buckets and shit. It's fun. That's my fun. You know what I'm saying? That's my fun. And I see these two guys across the way, like around the other gym. And they're shooting shots, all sorts of things. And I'm like, man, them dudes suck. Like, type thing in my head. I'm like, bro, it's not even worth to go, like, play these dudes. They were, they were dressed like 55 overalls from the 1990s. Super big pants and shit like that. Super big, like, uh, shorts and shit. Let me just tell y'all, bro. So they end up coming up to us and be like, yo, you trying to, uh, 2v2. I'm like... And like you know what I'm saying like I told you I don't I want competition I judge the book by its cover let me tell you I'm like eh, I want competition but I'm like eh, like I'm getting tired of playing my friend we played like about five games type shit so I'm like all right let's let's bust their ass real quick and like we're out out of nowhere when I tell you guys these guys turned the fuck up like out of nowhere they're throwing alley oops to each other to like you know like back all over um behind me like cross. Ali oop like a alley oop lay and shit like that. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck happened? And one of them like got handles and like like could shoot and all. So, bro, these guys could shoot from far, just like how I do. I'm like, whoa, hold on, where the fuck did this come from, right? So the first game we lose, right? We play a total of three games. The first game we lose like 11-7, but we're playing all ones. I agree to all ones, and I I don't like all ones. That shit is whack because I'm a shooter, so I shoot threes. So that like that's a way to suppress me like somewhat, right? So the next thing I'm like, all right, this game, I'm taking this shit serious now, right? Like, the first game was like a fluke. I'm like, yo, that's a prank. Like, that shit ain't happening again. Second game, I'm like, yo, we going to play for real now. So me and the homie tying up, and basically, they're giving buckets. And I'm talking my shit. They're talking they shit. They talking shit. I'm talking my shit. My homie's talking they shit. Bro, we running it. Like, they, it's like so physical that it's, it's so like, 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 it's so like the conversations are so like kind of like heated that it's like, bro. Like, one of us is going to swing type shit. It's kind of like that a little bit, right? So, we we playing, and they saying this. I'm shooting a shot. I'm like, man, come here. Like, fuck you talking about, like, you know, type shit. Like, you can't guard me. All that. You know you know how it goes, bro. And basically, right, it's like the last point, and I missed the shot to win the game. But it was like, man, I had, like, 20 points. My other friend had, like, one. I swear. I swear, like, 20. I, I had, like, 18. He had, like, two points. I swear. But it was, like, it was competition. These guys were, like, one of them was really good. The other one was good. They were really pretty fucking solid. Really solid players, right? I did not expect it, like I told you. So the second game, we lose, like, 20 to, like, 22 or whatever, right? Get, we do stay in the game. was up to, like, uh, missed a shot. Should have been a fucking good shot. It was a good shot, but I missed, right? Fair. Fine enough. At the end, like, okay, so now we play the third game, right? And basically, it's like 18, 12, we're up. And I'm like, man, we about to, we good, we about to win. Out of nowhere, my, that dude just starts spraying them shits on my friend. I'm like, yo, guard the fuck up, what are you doing? Bro, he's at damn near half court spraying them bitches. He shoot like four of them, game's over. I said, whoa, I should have fucking switched because there's no way that would have happened to me. But like, bro, I'm like, holy shit. Some shit like I do, but I like a little bit better. I was like, whoa, okay, now I got real respect for you because you dropped me off three times. And like, I'm going hard in these games. I'm not playing. Like, I'm mad like a motherfucker. I'm talking shit. I'm having like, bro, like 18 each game though. Like, I'm not gonna lie, my homies is just blowing me. They're kind of selling the bag, but he's blowing. And basically, you know, I was really mad at the end of the game, right? Like, this is a long video, but, bro, I was mad at the end of the game. And I sit down, and I felt defeated. For the first time, I'm like, holy shit. I lost three times in a row to people that I never expected to lose to. And I'm sitting down, and I'm I'm mad. I'm mad like a motherfucker. I'm going to keep it real. I'm. It's a, it's that type of mad that, like, yo, you want to fight this dude now. Like, he dropped you up. You got dropped off, and, like, you want to go swing on this shit, right? He's talking shit still. I'm like, all right, bro, like, you know, and he comes and talks to me in Spanish and shit. He says, like, like, you, like I respect him and everything, but, like, don't wake the lion up. And that touched me so, that hurt my, that burned my soul. He said, don't wake the lion up.
as if like I, if I was quiet, maybe I would have won. You know, if I was more humble and all this, like all that fucking like no, I'm like no, I give me the line, give me whatever the fuck you think you are. Like, give me, I need the best version of that person. Don't tell me don't wake the line like I'm, a, I'm some soy boy little bitch that, that can't... Like, you know, I'm supposed to win the game. Fucking give me the best version of yourself. I'm going to win. That's who Patrick is, and I lost, and it felt so weird. But this guy coming up to me talking about, don't wake the lion up. And he's, like, so serious. He's like, bro, don't wake the lion up. I'm like, fuck that. I'm, I'm literally in my brain like, yo, this guy is fucking blowing me, right? Like, he, yo, I'm so fucking angry at this point. He's like, don't wake the lion up. And it kept sticking with him. Like, I'm like... He said it twice. I'm like, no, what are you talking about? Like, and I, I can't speak Spanish as well. I'm like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, no, give me the best version of himself. And he ended up getting mad and shit. Like, he left the gym and everything like that. We dabbed up and everything like that, both of the guys and shit. But, like, but like I'm like, no, you fucker. Give me the best version of himself. I don't want no fucking bum ass dude. This is what I wanted. I wanted to lose. And, like, I'm sitting on the ground with the ball. I'm like, damn, this shit is eating at me. Like, I'm like, holy fucking shit. I won't forget this. And my homie... He's just like, another day, another dollar. Like, it didn't mean nothing to him. Like, the challenge, it didn't mean nothing to him. But, like, for me, it meant, like, okay, I need to get my weight up or something. I need to get stronger. I need to get <laughs> I need to get better at ball. I need to just... And I don't take ball serious. I don't. But it's, like, something I do on, the like, my free time. So, I'm like, man, I got to take ball serious, all types of shit, right? So, this is, like... Like, you got to understand, you start to see so much more levels. You want more competition. You want more, so much more when you're doing the things. And you start to do it... But you start to love the shit that you do. The challenges, all sorts of things, right? I needed that challenge. I needed to get my ass whooped. Even though I didn't lose by like fucking 20 points. I lost by like two points each game kind of thing. And I needed that. I ne It built me up. It made me more stronger, bro. It makes me want, like the day I go see them, I didn't get to play them again. I'll give you a part two about that. I, I know I'm not losing the next time. I swear we're not losing the next time. But... Overall, you start to set higher standards in whatever you do, guys. This is how this is how you start to love what you do. You set the goals. You get. You just continuously, slowly start to do it. At first, it's really shitty, but as you continuously start to do it, like oh, there's so many examples I could give you guys out of my life. Meditation. I fucking hated it. I couldn't do it. I didn't know how to do it. Literally, I used to sit there like a bot because I used to be on fucking TikTok and Instagram, uh, Snap, all sorts of things like a fucking bot. I couldn't sit and meditate, bro. Now I can go do that peacefully, easily, and I love to do it. I enjoy it. Same thing with uh, same thing with the books, bro. Same thing with reading. I couldn't read a page. I could not focus. I was a, I used to smoke so much weed. I could not focus. I was my brain was like brain farted. I was like retarded almost, bro. I love books. After this, I'm gonna cook my steak and I'm gonna read my book and go to sleep. But this was like a very touching topic that like I just spoke you guys like everything i knew bro like this is the things that are this is this shit is going to build you and it's 2024 you do not want to stay that same person never this is you gotta understand right you gotta understand i was at the gym the other day right it's my guy you know i, I train at planet fitness i got a new gym membership too by the way so i got two gym memberships shout out to that but basically this is my guy shout out my guy too always having good conversations like and shit like that he's like Damn, bro, it's already 2024, bro. You remember, like, I, I remember just seeing you first come in this bitch. And I'm like, word, like, a year passed already. A year passed like this, guys. You gotta understand. Like, you think, like, you have all this time, like, 12 months. Like, holy shit, that shit goes like this, bro. I'm telling you, I'm about to be 21. Like, that shit is crazy. I'm about to be 21 in about, like, three, about four or five months from now. I'm about to be 21. Like, that shit is crazy, bro. You understand how fast time goes. And if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, even if you don't like it, you have to go do with the things you have to do. If not, you're going to stay that same person. I done seen the people. I, I'm telling you guys, I go to Planet, all of that, the bots, all of them doing some nut shit in there. They'll go for a week, never seen again. Never seen again. I'm telling you this right now. If you are going to separate yourself in the self-improvement shit, because this is a lonely journey. I've been saying this shit. I done said this in like damn near all my videos. I understand it's lonely. There's no one else going to be like me. There really isn't. It's very rare that I'll meet another person like Patrick. Very rare. Very fucking rare. But you have to understand that like, you're holding yourself to higher standards. Higher, higher, higher standards. And you can't have nothing but respect for yourself unless you do it. Because if you don't, it's going to be like, man, it's another year. Another year flew by. 
Another year, I'm still fat. Another year, I, I don't make no money. It's like, whatever you do, this translates to whatever you do. This is going to bring you to that top tier level, bro. I promise you guys, man. So that's all I have for today's video, bro. I just poured out everything I knew in my, like, basically my heart to you guys, bro. I really did. So, you know, if you guys like this video, bro, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe, bro. I'm going to leave my last video right here if you guys didn't catch it. So stay yourself, stay 300, or whatever you're doing, like, trust me, I believe you, bro.